So I didn't get an opportunity to do one of these last week. Uh, the temperatures where I'm located plummeted uh, really hard, really fast. And uh, I didn't get sick, actually, which, you know, I'm, I'm glad of that because I've had COVID twice. And both times it was pretty terrible. The end of 2022, I had a severe case that put me in the hospital. That's what the GoFundMe thing was is about. But anyway... Uh, I didn't get sick, but my voice decided to take off. It decided to go on vacation. I don't know where it went. It's not 100% back yet. I'm sure you can hear it uh, versus my normal voice. But uh, last Friday, it was terrible. I mean, it, it was squeaking and it was uh, croaking. And, yeah, I, I sounded like I was knocking on dust door. So I just decided I wouldn't torture anybody by uh, trying to whisper shout through an entire video. But... There was a comment on here that I actually wanted to talk about uh, that had, uh, and it's not up any longer. I don't know if I deleted it in a fit of anger. I hope I did not because I actually uh, don't mind the trolling comments. As a matter of fact, I could explain why they are a gift that keeps on giving. Uh, but uh, the only reason I approve comments, like I said before, I had people trying to publish personal information on here. And I wasn't going to just have that pop up in one of the comment sections. That's the only reason why I approve them. Other than that, I've had AA members, oh, you're terrified to publish my comment. And then when I publish it, they see <laughs> But anyway, that's beside the point. But I wanted to address some of what they talked about in there because the, it wasn't the usual style of attack that I normally get. What I normally get is pretty much uh, what I've always gotten in the, in the, I think I've been doing this almost 10 years now, or at least nine years for a fact. And it's the standard stuff that I got when I was an AA cult member. You know, you got a resentment, you know, you were, you're a drunk who wanted to keep on drinking and you didn't want to honestly give yourself to the simple program. Uh, I know what I look like leaning over into the phone like this. I'm going to get a better phone stand where I don't look like I'm the hunchback of fucking Notre Dame when I'm talking. But, um, you got a resentment, you weren't honest, you weren't a real alcoholic, you didn't want to work the program, you've obviously never worked the steps, you've obviously never had a sponsor, and all that other shit, uh, which, you know, is kind of a gift that keeps on giving, and what I mean by that is that I've never had anybody come along and convince me that anything that I'm saying, or any information that I've uncovered, or any logical contradictions that i found in the AA program, or the AA uh, Big Book, or any of it, is incorrect. Nobody's ever proven me wrong. They just come at me usually with insults. But this was a different type of comment, uh, which I felt needed addressing. And uh, I don't have it in front of me, but I'm going to pull out a few uh, of the key points that I do remember uh, before it vanished. Like I said, I can't really remember if they deleted it or not, but it was about uh, this guy has been up here and he keeps running his mouth about all this stuff, and he's obviously never moved on, and it's it's really a tragic that he's still stuck in AA, and you know, and blah, 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 blah. I'm going to address that uh, later. Uh, the comment, though, I want to get to at the end is the comment that they said that they've already done proven that there was an afterlife. There's all, They've already done proven that. Usually when someone says they've already done proven they don't know anything about science or how it works or how evidence works or anything like that. But they concluded it by saying, you know, for, for you to sit up there and talk the way you talk, then it, it leaves me to know that you are nothing but a liar. Uh, I'll be a little bit kinder when I respond to you. I won't call you a flat-out liar. Uh, I'll indicate you could be a liar. Uh, but I want to address that that point first before we get to the, the, the whole thing about me just being a bitter, miserable, angry man who just will not move on. He just won't get over it. He's stuck in the AA meetings. He's still resentful. And all these old sponsors and sponsors that treated him like dirt, you know, tough it up, you know, suck it up, move on, you know, and all that other thing. I want to do an in-depth talk about that, but I want to address that, that, that last point first, actually. Uh, I am 100% confident that if you go all the way through all these videos everywhere, that I never said there could be no afterlife. I never said that there absolutely cannot be no afterlife. I never said that I knew what happens when people die. So you're calling me a liar about something that I never even said. And you're uh, claiming in this hysterical tone that I must be making this all up because... Science has already done proven that there's an afterlife. Well, science has actually uh, done no such fucking thing. 
I'm not saying that there's not an afterlife. I'm saying that I don't really know what happens when we die. I don't really know that if the concept of an afterlife is just the brain putting together something in the final moments before you check out of this world, and before you completely check out of this world, that that's going to be kind of your eternal life. Maybe your last die in a few minutes. It's kind of like the way you can have a really long dream, and long dreams take uh, place in a very short span of time. When you're dreaming at night, you don't sleep there for eight straight hours just dreaming the whole dream the whole entire time. It really, uh, from what little understanding I have of science, it only lasts maybe a couple minutes or so. Uh, but when it comes to near-death experience, if that's what they're talking about, which I don't know what they're talking about, they just made this assertion. They've proven there an after, there's an afterlife, and you're a liar because you say there is no afterlife, so that means you're just a liar. Well... I'm going to start out by saying either you don't know how evidence works, or you don't understand how proof works, or you are in fact a liar, and a dishonest liar at that one. Uh, there's a couple of things I want to address with that before I get on with it. Uh, nowhere in my videos did I ever say that people don't live after they die. I don't know. I don't know what happens to us. You know, uh, a near-death experience uh, has that word near death in front of it for a reason. Nobody's ever been 100% fully brain dead for like two or three days and then come to in the morgue and sat up on the table. Uh, there's nobody that's been dead for like a month uh, that was in the funeral home getting embalmed and then sat up in the funeral home and said, whoa, I'm, I came back from the dead. That has not happened. What has happened is people in situations where they thought they were dying, and there's a reason why I said thought they were dying, experience these things, which by the way, is not unique to one particular culture. There is uh, even a video I did somewhere on here about about something like that, I, I can't remember the title and I didn't pull it up for this video, that says that pretty much in any culture that you live in, most people see what they, they thought they were going to see. Like uh, there was a book I read about uh, the possibility of people being reincarnated in India, where people have India, you know, where you have a multitude of, of uh, religions in India. You have Hindus, you have Buddhists, you have Muslims, you have uh, Christians. You know, India is a very large country with a very large population, which has a variety of different beliefs. Even the Hindus aren't all unified in one branch of that type of uh, belief or whatever. But uh, those people who were looking for evidence of reincarnation, the people who had, had near-death experiences, pretty much saw what they they thought they would see in a time like that. It doesn't prove that, that, that those things are real. It doesn't prove that your brain doesn't put that together uh, at the last few seconds when you think you're going to die. And the reason why I keep saying, and it's very important, I think, for anybody watching this, and my voice is about to give out, so I'll try to speed up through this, think you're going to die. There's a lot of situations where people saw the light and where people thought they crossed over and where people thought they had become a part of the universe or whatever it is they thought they were going to be uh, that weren't actually in danger of dying at all. There was a book I read about their death experiences where it said... Uh, that a lot of these people weren't even close to death at all. They thought they were due to certain problems with their health or whatever. As a matter of fact, it was also uh, pointing out that we really cannot, We well, it's not that we cannot, it's for ethical reasons. Science doesn't often uh, study the brain scans of people who are in a near-death state. Why? Because, well, you know, can you imagine if you're a family member sitting out there in the waiting room in a hospital and uh, the doctor comes out and says, look, you know, I don't really think your father's dying, but I think he might think he's dying. He might be having a near-death experience in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to stop the medical procedure and we're going to wheel him down the hallway and we're going to stick him in a CAT scan and see what his brain looks like to determine if he's really seeing something that's beyond his own brain and chemical processes and biological processes. They don't study near-death experiences that much because it's kind of rare that we can get somebody to produce a near-death experience, and if we could do that, they're going to probably be in an emergency room and in a hospital, and we're not going to just, yeah, stop the emergency. Hey, hey, you know, cut the fucking defibrillators off and get him down the hallway there. Get that CAT scan on him. we got to find out if his soul is leaving his body. So these are really notoriously hard to study. So they have not already done proven. Uh, I could be a pedantic asshole there and say something about that sentence, but I won't because I hate it when online trolls do that to me. Uh, but they have not proven no such thing, and I have never said there could not be no afterlife. And so therefore, 
you calling me a liar just proves that you're calling me a liar for something I never fucking said. So you're not a very good listener is what I'm going to respond to that with. I also would like to throw one more thing out there before I get to the, the, the straight up topic of the video here, which I've wasted 10 minutes on, but that, that was important to me. I don't like being called a fucking liar, especially by someone who doesn't even know what they're talking about. But you've heard Bill W. talk about how, uh, you know, deep down inside every man, woman, and child believes in God or whatever. Well, I just found out uh, about a week ago that that's not even 100% close to being true. There is a tribe of people uh, in the Amazon called the Paraha people. Uh, I didn't know about them until recently. They don't have any religious belief whatsoever. The entire tribal structure as it functions, functions on what people remember in memories and what they've been told in memories. There was a Christian missionary that went down there to convert them all to his religion. And uh, their question to him was, have you ever met Jesus? Have you ever talked to Jesus? Have you ever talked to God? Can we go talk to God? And when his answer was no to every one of those questions, they lost total interest in him and they and they couldn't be missionary. As a matter of fact, he later became an atheist, which kind of debunks Bill W's idea that deep down inside everybody is this fundamental idea of everything. But now to address the second point, uh, I obviously haven't moved on. I obviously am just stuck in AA. I'm obviously just miserable and, and angry and just can't get over the fact that I got mistreated in life. I, I think it's kind of rich that you would talk like that, considering I have shared on here some personal things that was very difficult for me to talk about, like uh, the way the mental health system treated me uh, when I tried to commit suicide, uh, and I think uh, a few other things, but I'm going to take you at your word for more than a moment. It has nothing to do with me not moving on. I do this 30 minutes a week. I mean, not 30 minutes a week. I mean, some of my videos here lately have been 30 minutes. I do this a few minutes a week, if possible. That's one Friday a week, or, or, or Thursday a week, depending on the day, depending on how it works. I devote a little of my time to exposing a very harmful, dangerous religious cult that has permeated the addiction uh, narrative uh, throughout the world today. I do that not because I'm some bitter, angry guy that just can't move on, that's just stuck in one place, that's just a sorry, pathetic mess that won't rise out of his uh, place. I'm doing it because it's still going on. Um, you see, there is a part of me that realizes that uh, I saw with my own two eyes and I experienced personally a lot of uh, degrading, traumatizing experiences in the 12-step cult religion uh, where I nearly drank myself to death, where I put myself into the emergency room multiple times, uh, where I have experienced DTs, and the only thing that I was given uh, in return for a very destructive, deadly addiction that could have taken my life and has taken the lives of many people that I saw over the years in AA, the only uh, prescribed cure that I was given was more cult meetings and going to cult meetings and being told that I was just full of pride, a sinful, hum you know, sinful uh, arrogant, couldn't be humble before God and all of that. There's a reason why I do these videos. It has nothing to do with me just being pissed off at the people that did me real dirty in that program, and there were a whole lot of low-life bastards that did me really dirty. But guess what? I didn't get the worst of it. I saw people that got way worse than what I got, and I see stories on these channel, on here, in this channel, and on social media from other sources of people who went through even worse experiences than I went through. Uh... There are hundreds of thousands of people who have died as a result of being court-ordered into this program or as a result of not knowing that there were alternate solutions to this program uh, and were given this kind of cult religion to treat their predictions. And it's still going on. It's going on today. It hasn't changed at all. I would, maybe it would be a, a, an easy thing to say, well, you know what? All that happened to me. Fuck it. It's over with now. What do I care that other people are drinking themselves to death out there, right? What do I care that drug corps is still sending people to AA to be preyed upon by old-timer guru assholes that are high off of the sound of their own fucking voices, uh, preaching outdated uh, religious claptrap to people who have real issues, real mental problems, real struggles with addiction, and those people aren't getting the help, help that they need? What do I care about it? doesn't affect me any longer. I'm not there any longer. So fuck making videos. I'm just going to move on. I'm just not going to not give a shit. I'm just not going to give a shit that the fact that when the pandemic happened, the alcoholic rates in this country, and I'm not saying alcoholic as in the way AA defines it, 
But the problem drinking in this country skyrocketed, skyrocketed during the lockdowns. You had pieces of shit like that one governor that closed the liquor store that all but condemned people who were dependent on alcohol to die. And uh, it, it, it has not changed at all in the, in the, in the decades that, that, that this cult religion has dominated the addiction field. And yet, people are dying every day from addiction. And what are they being told? They're being told, well, you didn't do your four-step right. You just wouldn't get honest. You wouldn't get humble. Family members are encouraged to be cruel to people, throw people out on the streets, let them starve to death or freeze to death in this kind of weather that we're having right now because you can't be nice to people who are addicted. You got to show them tough love. You got to torment them and torture them until they're willing to get honest and suck uh, the cult religious dogma, uh, you know, hook, line, and sinker down, right? That's why I haven't moved on. It's not about me moving on or it's not about me repeating my own traumas. It's not about me worrying about all those sons of no good bitches who treated me the way they did. By the way, I sent them a lot of these videos and they all blocked me on social media like the cowardly bully and fucks they are because it's real brave of them to pick on someone who's too intoxicated to stand up for himself. But it's another thing entirely when you're dealing with a guy that's not under the influence of alcohol and is not afraid of you any longer. That's a different story altogether. So no, it's not about, I can't move on. It's not about the fact that I'm stuck in some place that I can't get over. It's about the fact that this country right now in the worldwide areas of the world, worldwide areas of the world was a poor way to put that. I do understand that, but I'm speaking off the cuff here. But worldwide, in a lot of places in the civilized world, uh, this cult religion is used to treat problem drinking, problem drug use. It is used to make people feel like they are sinners and immoral and bad people because they won't quit drinking. It is made used to degrade people. It has given sober house or sober living homes the power to operate without even government inspection, uh, to put people in, the, in these sober living condition homes where they steal from people, force people to live in intolerable conditions, allow people to get stolen from, ripped off, cheated, and they can remand them back into the court system or they can toss them out into the street with no legal recourse whatsoever because of this fucking harmful cult that you think I should just say, you know what, it's not affecting me anymore. I'll just move on. Because I'm not such a fucking loser that I have to sit here and talk about it for the rest of my life or whatever. No, it has nothing to do with the fact that right now, in this country alone, 12-step industry dominates the addiction field. And we can't even have normal, healthy conversations about everything from moderation to harm reduction to anything else without these assholes uh, throwing all their money in ad campaigns and everything else behind this thing to keep it going and keep the monolith as it is. I got one other thing I got to say about this thing, too. Beliefs, believing in, in higher power, AA cult religion, that has consequences. Real world consequences that the rest of the world has to suffer because of those beliefs. Those kinds of fucking people, they vote. You know who they vote for? They vote for politicians that are going to be, yeah, exactly. They are the ones that get jobs in the treatment center industry. They're the ones who become people... Uh, that put forward studies like those fucking Cochrane papers. They're the ones who get to open up sober living homes all across the country and herd people in like cattle and take their paychecks with no legal recourse whatsoever. One of the sober living homes I saw during my time in the program, I would not let, I wouldn't have let a dog loose in there uh, uh, unleashed. It was, it was such disgusting slum tenement conditions. That guy never gets inspected by the government. That guy gets all kinds of tax breaks. And that guy treats those people living under him like garbage. And you know how he's able to get away with it? Because the 12-step cult religion in this country gets a free pass. And I see so many people saying bullshit stories like, well, at least we're doing something with those people who have a drinking problem. At least we're doing something with those people that have a drug problem. Yeah, you're shoving them into a cult religion and you don't give a fuck if they get the help that they need or not. You don't care if they die of drug overdoses or not. You don't care what happens to them. We're doing something about it after all and we're going to lead them to God anyway. So what does it matter? Some are going to have to just die so that others can live. We're still clinging to primitive religion in the modern day uh, because of this cult religion. And you're telling me that I'm the one who's got a fucking problem because... I just won't move on. I'm just a miserable guy sitting here like a parasite complaining about AA and just will not move on, right? The conversation has got to change about addiction. And of course, I'm just one dude with a channel, so I'm not going to actually change the national conversation about addiction. But you know what? There may be somebody listening here that's worried about 
Maybe this fucking thing that I've been listening to and maybe these creepy predatory old timers that I got for sponsors, maybe all my doubts in my head that I'm thinking about these people, maybe those doubts are true. Maybe I can trust my own thinking. Maybe I can fucking leave the cult religion. Maybe I can quit drinking on my own without these this shit. That's why I'm continuing to make these videos. And I keep continuing to uncover information about this cult religion. I keep coming up finding new information about this religion. And as long as I keep finding new information, and as long as I keep finding uh, other logical fallacies and loopholes and other injustices that go on in the legal system, I'm going to keep making these fucking videos. I'm going to keep making them. You know, um, there was uh, something I was listening to not too long ago uh, about on the radio about the Pentagon Papers. The Pentagon Papers and one of the award winning journalists. Uh, who covered the storm, he was talking, and he said, yeah, the United States government knew they could not win the Vietnam War. Uh, a large majority of people in government, in the Defense Administration, knew the Vietnam War could not be won. But you know what? Because there were a tiny little minority of people that said, yeah, but there is a possibility we can win the Vietnam War, they kept sending people over there to die. They kept sending and drafting people and sending them straight over there to be murdered to die in battle that didn't even have to happen because they knew, they fucking knew that it was an unwinnable war. The government and the addiction center and the, and the addiction industry in this country, it's not going to change through some kind of fucking awakening. It's not going to change because, because it, it wakes up one morning and realizes, you know what, we got a failed problem on our hands and we're killing people by sending them to these fucking drug cores and all those other kind of things. <coughs> so we need to stop doing it. Now, they're going to change when they're forced to change. When enough people step forward and say, I'm tired of having my First Amendment rights violated by being court-ordered into religion. I'm tired of state-sponsored uh, religion. I'm tired of this superstitious mumbo-jumbo that's dominating uh, the, the field with people with drinking problems. Okay, I'm fed up with it, and it's time we do something different. That's when the government changes things. And it's not going to happen if everybody just looks away from it and says, you know what? I saw a lot of human rights abuses. I saw a lot of terrible things going on. I saw twisted things happening in drug corps. I saw the well-known secrets of treatment center counselors who were sexually assaulting patients, like that one case in New Hampshire that they did a six-part series on. It was an open secret. Everybody knew the guy that was in charge of this New Hampshire center uh, was abusing people, but you know what? We can't do anything about it because of the traditions, right? Uh, maybe... When people say, I'm sick and tired of this kind of shit going on and nothing being done about it, that's when something's going to fucking change. So in one way, I do have to, to conclude the whole thing with how fucking dare you talk to me about how I'm sad and pathetic for not moving on, while you would rather turn your fucking head away and just let this injustice keep happening and not do a goddamn thing about it. Anyway, I was getting a little, uh, little irritated there, I think. <laughs> it's a minor example of it. Um... So yeah, I think that pretty much sums up my argument uh, for this week. It was just something I wanted to do on a side note. I know here lately I've been reading off the Armage Papers uh, website quite a lot in these videos, but there's other videos I could do as well, and there's other topics I want to talk about as well. But unless something terrible happens uh, to me, or unless, you know, AA manages to figure out a way to report me to YouTube and screw my channel over or something like that. I'm going to keep right on making these videos as long as I keep finding new information. I'm going to keep putting it out there for people who are currently sitting in a meeting tonight that are thinking about going and drinking afterwards and they're, caught and they're saying to themselves, you know, I'm drinking after this meeting and I'm a terrible person because I just won't get honest and do the steps when there's absolutely nothing fucking wrong with you. Nothing wrong with you at all. You're just not being given the help that you actually need because lots of people would like to look at people like me and say, well, you're just a sad sack who won't move on and would rather just turn the blind fucking eye and just let this, let, this, let this violation of people's basic human rights, let this narrative in society that because someone has an addiction problem, it's okay to treat them like shit, let it continue because it's just better to move on and be you know done with it. Anyway, until next week.